Maybe. I would say if somebody would ask me now, do you want to do this all over again, having more than 25 exhibitions and side projects, I would say no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean, I would say, yes, it was definitely worth it because all the interaction you have with the artists, with the um, visitors coming to your space, asking you questions, really opening the, the, um, the world of artistic, yeah, the artistic world or the world of, of how to create a show to, to a public that, is really, that really needs information and is really keen on, on getting to know the artist, then it was worth it. Um, but time-wise, how much time and effort we put in this, it's a lot and it's money, it's, and it's not paid, it's a project space, you, it's not a gallery, you don't, you don't have a salary from it, you do this out of your mm. own free will. All of us had worked already in different Kind of art professional scenes. So I was working in uh, at the Künstlerhaus Bethan in artist residency. Jill and Marie had been working in, in galleries uh, for several years already. And I think we all were at the kind of similar spot in our lives where we had been doing a lot of projects for others, for other institutions, for other galleries. And we kind of felt that it could actually be interesting or we got curious about doing our own projects. And even though there is a lot of space in Berlin, for us, of course, the easiest was to get our own space and then not being dependent on proposing a, a project or kind of um, pitching an idea, but really having a key to a room where we can 24 hours decide on what we want to do. I think this was kind of the, mm. this the is starting the... point or the most interesting for us. Also how we came up with the name for in situ, uh, in situ in terms of uh, projects that happen on spot so they play with the space we have um, or we had it was a souterrain so it was not the easiest um, um, exhibition space um, yeah and also to work in situ on spot with the artists um, that are living in berlin so you have a huge international uh, art scene in berlin so that this was the easiest uh, way to do it and of course it was also a money thing. I mean, as a project space you don't have a lot of money, so it's easier to work with artists that are living in the same city. We decided at the beginning that we would try it out or we would have this time frame of one year set for us. We very quickly came up with these ideas of having cycles. So we always wanted or we liked this idea of thinking of our program. They are also like exhibitions which are also connected to each other and which really make a sense for the audience to follow basically over over a whole year and so this became a bit um our rhythm therefore our like signature, signature yeah. 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 <clears throat> so this first cycle for example was um we were focusing very much on on a topic of art production in a wide sense so this was kind of interesting the first exhibitions we did were also quite classical in the sense of that they were topic orientated we had one topic um we followed then within the a group exhibition and had different artistic positions dealing with this topic. So we had an exhibition on um, the blank page, for example. So the moment when artists are not knowing what to produce or when there is a kind of boredom maybe in the studio. So we were in this exhibition only exhibiting art pieces which were maybe also side products or art pieces which only were afterwards declared as art pieces but in the moment not really um, meant as such. Or we also had an exhibition on the topic of art market, for example. So we had this kind of different topics related to art production in a wider sense. Mm. Yeah. The second cycle, that's also when our uh, fourth colleague joined us, Lauren Reed, uh, after the first year. So we made the second cycle, which was focused on uh, uh, relationship with other artists and curators and colleagues. So we came mm. up with uh, an idea for the third cycle. Mm to have fictional characters in our space. So there were four fictional characters and those exhibitions were, were really set up as, um, as an entrance into the mind maybe of this fictional uh, person. For Madeleine, she's like we imagined her as an 80 year old um, woman who is 
suffering from Alzheimer or dementia, slowly forgetting um, things and getting disorientated. And for her, for example, we decided to make the whole scenery of the exhibition as if you would enter her living room, actually, or her, her, her flat. And she was so, not present anymore. She, was, she yeah. had left and there was like um, a video work that mm. was still showing on a TV. So it was like just you could still somehow feel her presence because we had some clues in the room. But uh, yeah, but then we invited artists that were really, that had to play with this very strong curatorial mm. idea of... And mostly. of course the curatorial part is really to be very sensitive on what the artworks are about. Because you cannot, like we very often had the discussion about not using the artwork as decoration for the character. So it, the aim is still, the aim is still to present artworks and pre present artistic positions and make them somehow accessible for the audience or interesting for the audience. So, um, so I think this was this was also for us then always a big thing we discussed about. And some of the artworks we found could fit. We decided then to not present because we felt it was a bit of misuse of, of the artwork, mm -hmm. just using it as a kind of decor for for these characters. I think this is this is how we work in general. Yes. Like we come up with an idea, we come up with an with a concept. Or now I would I really would call it nowadays narration because for us it's very much about the story of the whole thing. We don't um, see it also as a pure exhibition, but we like this idea of thinking of the exhibition as something more. Um, like as for example an exhibition as if it would be a fictional character or um, we had also a cycle four where we created different corridors we called it so kind of um, corridors in different time zones or moments in time and um, so we have the idea of a narration and then we start researching for artists or for artworks and of course with this the concept or the narration maybe changes also slightly this happens I yes. think But um, but we have a very strong idea, and I mm. think, for example, at the beginning, like with um, one um, art production we did together was with Armin Keplinger for um, Corridor One, Onkalo. So this was actually um, a corridor focusing on the moment when um, the first waste <laughs> repository um, was built in Finland, or it will be built 2020. It will be finished for nuclear waste. And um, the interesting thing about this um, repository is it's actually 400 meters down in the earth. So it's really a huge building and construction project happening right now in Finland. And um, we saw a documentary about it. And the interesting thing about it is that also the scientists there are actually dealing with the question, how can we store something which needs to be there for, let's say, 100,000 years to be really safe? And what do we know about what will be in 100,000 years? How can we protect this area that maybe future species are not entering this dangerous area, for example? Um, we had for this exhibition created a kind of corridor with all kind of aspects around these questions. And then in the last room we had um, Armin Keplinger produced uh, a new work reacting to the situation. He created, I think, a wonderful installation with um, metal panels where a kind of wax was coming out of these panels and it looked very industrial and a bit as if you would enter this nuclear waste or kind of a technical industrial uh, yeah. room it. you're not sure what's happening it feels a bit dangerous it feels a bit weird what is also new from now is that uh, mm -hmm. we don't have the space anymore the space was of course a very positive things for us and that's how we developed together But not having it anymore is also something we see as positive and indeed we developed, I guess, after four mm -hmm. years of exhibition, four cycles within our little space. I mean, it was not that little, but was also not that big. So at one point you feel like the limits and now we can explore much more different spaces and uh, play with uh, new context, new people, new artists, because we try to work with local artists as well, meaning from Denmark, from uh, Prague, uh, or next year would be in Luxembourg in Casino. So it's uh, very interesting for us. That's what we were looking uh, for, and it kind mm. of works out well for the moment. I think having a space is like crucial for the for the networking and you have a platform where you meet people yeah. where people can come back 
see what you're developing. Um, but yeah, after nearly five years where we had from no budget to little budget, uh, it's like a like a normal step that that you decide if you want to continue or if in our case if you are invited uh, by institutions and you have a you have a production budget or a budget for the exhibition there are so many artists coming to berlin and um, and also people doing projects in berlin it's with no money at the beginning before we won this uh, prize from the city we paid the space of self from the pocket, basically. We were imagining it's like a studio. An artist needs a studio to walk, so we would need a space to curate exhibitions. It's kind of an investment. And by chance, divided by four was uh, still okay. And I remember also we tried to give a little bit of money for artists, really it was uh, just for a print or frame or the minimum of production. And this came from the sale of the beers uh -huh. or any drinks uh, of the previous exhibition. So that was our way of uh, functioning. Later on, two years later, we get these prizes where we could um, not so much pay ourselves, actually, but no, no, more pay, uh, at all. <laughs> pay the space, at least, which was kind of re re yeah. relieving for us. Really? Oops, sorry. But, uh, yeah, we could um, and offer a little bit of money to artists. I mean, a little bit sometimes. Uh, um, serious amount of money, let's say, uh -huh. for artists to produce something for us. So it was uh, in 2014, we uh, were working on this cycle too, based on this uh, relationship between art professional and a little bit aside this uh, cycle, we wanted together to uh, initiate the, something between art spaces based in Berlin. Um, so we called it the Project Space Festival. It happens once a year in August, so during the summer, which is quite important because it's uh, the time frame where nothing else happens. So when the galleries are closed, the museum are also not having new exhibition. And we wanted to bring together the scene of the art spaces, the project spaces from Berlin at this moment, offering like a format of one day, one space, meaning altogether 31 uh, spaces walking together. And now I think what is nice, so the Project Space Festival now is also developing further. So after we did um, two Project Space mm -hmm. Festivals ourselves, like meaning organizing it, initiating it, and then we felt like that we also want to give it kind of further and um, have different people also organizing and also creating maybe or kind of thinking about the Project Space Festival out of the scene. So actually, so that actually it's something changing within itself because also the scene is very quickly changing. So now like i'm sure this summer will be again different spaces like nobody knew before like in berlin we say like there's this this number um which says that there are 150 project spaces in berlin active project active spaces. project spaces yeah. but then you have constantly spaces closing again and new ones opening again and i think actually the idea of the project space of having some people investing kind of energy and motivation for a certain time of period um, is actually very nice and I think that after time you get institutionalized yourself mm, maybe even. Which... so I think there's a kind of boredom maybe could happen or a kind of yeah energy loss so f for me that's also why we decided then is actually to close our space again for us it was actually okay to say after four years now this is done and now we're moving on mm. 